So good morning guys, here I am at the uh, Cliff College Chapel and as uh, some of you know I've been away on my PhD study week this week um, and this is a real kind of gift really. So um, the kind of circuit stewards that were appointing, that were in place when uh, I was appointed uh, agreed when I came here that um, I could take time out to continue my uh, PhD study which I'd already begun um, which is looking at um, where uh, growth occurs in the Methodist Church in the UK and particularly how that correlates to an understanding of the traditional um, model of circuit in Methodism. So um, it's a fascinating piece of work but uh, I'm in my fifth year of six and I'm beginning to get to the serious bit now. So twice a year I end up coming into Cliff just for um, a bit of study time and a bit of input and so that they can check up that I really am actually doing some work. And uh, last night I joined with uh, loads of others of the student body in worship here in the chapel. Um, really great evening and uh, really inspiring time. And so um, if you've not ever been to Cliff and you find yourself in Derbyshire, it's a wonderful spot to visit and um, a lovely space to retreat to and uh, to find uh, a bit of peace and quiet and really sense the presence uh, of God. Well, it's great to welcome you to worship this morning. Um, uh, wherever you are, you're really welcome. My name is Gareth. I'm the lead minister here um, at Methodist Central Hall in Plymouth. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to worship this morning. We've got Paul and Penny and uh, plenty others assisting with our worship today and uh, helping us enter into the presence of God through our music. And I'll be uh, speaking and leading the rest of the service, including today communion. Um, and so I just encourage you, um, to join with us as we share bread and wine. If you want to grab um, some things now at home, um, some simple things that resemble kind of bread and wine, do so, and that you'll be all ready uh, for later on in the service. You're all very welcome to join in wherever you are. Our young people are back from Woodlands. They had an amazing time at the theme park um, down in South Devon and uh, had a great time of getting to know each other and of bonding. And uh, it's been a really special uh, uh, weekend for them. So we're really thrilled by that. I'm really excited to hear of what God is doing amongst our teenage uh, group. Reminder too, um, that just in case you wanted to nip in the car and uh, race down to church later, our general church meeting uh, is today at 12. 12.30 and uh, you're welcome to join us for that if for any reason you're tied up somewhere else this morning um, but can get to church. Um, it is uh, great to welcome you as I said and great to have you with us um, uh, once again for worship and um, we hope this morning that God blesses you and encourages you as we continue our series exploring what it means for us as a Christian to um, consider 
uh, the use of our, uh, the resources of our planet and um, what it means for us to engage in things like climate change and climate justice. So we're thinking this morning about that being a Christian issue, not just a kind of a green lefty liberal issue, but a thoroughly Christian issue. And uh, we'll be uh, exploring that from uh, the scriptures this morning. So I do hope that it, God speaks to you and encourages you. And I hope as well that the Lord will bless you as you gather with us uh, today. So have a great morning. Um, it's lovely to have you with us. And we pray um, that God will meet you wherever you are. Good morning, it is really so good to be here. I'm thrilled, welcome to worship. I know if you're online, you'll have been welcomed already. It's great to see you. There are so many people in the hall today and they're all looking really excited. We're gonna have a great time. Um, Penny and I are really excited because we were on holiday, then we had to stay, and then recently we've been at local churches. And so it's just great to be here today, isn't it? Definitely. Right answer, good. Okay, <laughs> now. Do you remember in the Bible when Jesus went into Jerusalem, the Pharisees said, look, tell those people to stop praising and shouting Hosanna. And he said, if I told them to stop, the stones would make the noise. Well, it's going to be like that today. And I've got some friends. It's a great day today because, well, it's a great day and a sad day. It's a sad day because Dan, our drummer, is going off to university, so we're going to miss him. But it's a great day because Hannah, I don't know if you can see her. If you can't online, don't you worry. Um, she's, you're going to hear her playing the fiddle. So it's a viola, actually, but for those of you who don't know, it doesn't matter. Now, we're going to sing two songs that you know really well. And I've got a team of friends who are going to jump and clap. Now, I want you to stand. I'm going to give you a little lesson in how to clap. If you're at home and maybe you're not well, you can't dance, you can't clap, just wiggle an arm. If you're still in bed, sit up and dance in bed or shake a leg. Right, let's stand. Let's get this praising going. Even Gareth's going to join in. He's all primed. Okay, so you're going to clap. Can you clap? Okay, and just go. Okay, and they might dance. Okay. Everything, everything, everything. 
psalmist said, then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Father, we are indeed glad to be among your people in your presence, declaring your praise this morning. It is our delight to dance and clap and sing for joy for such great things you have done and so great is your name. We delight to worship you and we join our voice indeed with all of creation to acclaim your praise and your majesty, your goodness and your mercy and your grace. Great things you have taught us, great things you have done. We worship you. We give you the honour and the praise from glad hearts today. We rejoice in your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Give these guys a round of applause and uh, uh, for setting the tone. They did a brilliant job. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a delight uh, to see you today, uh, whether you're at home uh, watching us online or whether you're in our building uh, today. It's so wonderful to welcome you to worship here from Methodist Central Hall uh, in Plymouth. For those that... Um, uh, don't know my name is Gareth I'm the lead minister here and uh, I'll be speaking uh, a little later on in uh, the service glad to have Paul and Penny and uh, uh, associated friends who are leading our worship uh, this morning we're grateful for their ministry it's so lovely to have them here uh, with us um, if you are uh, new to the life of the church, particularly if you're uh, here in Plymouth studying, um, then we want to offer you a particularly warm welcome. It's not exclusive to you, it's there to everybody, but a particularly warm welcome to you if you're here uh, studying. It's great to have you. And uh, we've got a load of leaflets that are specifically uh, uh, targeted at welcoming new students to the city. And Johnny, do you want to just stand up? Johnny and face them so they see you as well. So Johnny, uh, our lay pastor, is responsible for our work with young adults and students. And if you're new to the city here studying, we'd love to get to know you. And Johnny particularly would love to say hi and make sure you get one of these leaflets so that you know uh, all that is going on for students and young adults uh, here in the life of this church. Uh, next Sunday is our harvest service which Johnny Libby is uh, leading and um, you're encouraged if you want to bring gifts you can uh, bring them on Saturday and leave them here in the church of gifts of produce etc and they'll be nicely excuse me, arranged, um, or we're encouraging people uh, to give uh, donations of food or money towards the work of uh, our food bank uh, down at Stonehouse. So it's uh, very much part of our work, and uh, more details were in the midweek message uh, this week and uh, will be in the midweek message uh, this coming week as well. And then a reminder that um, it is our general church meeting immediately after uh, the service this morning. We hope to wrap up our worship at around 12 o'clock, space for a coffee and get a grab of fresh air. And then at 12.30 in here, uh, we'll be uh, discussing the life of the church and all are welcome uh, to share in that conversation, uh, which we hope will last sort of a maximum of uh, an hour, maybe a little less. So you're all very welcome to join us for that. Now we've got some sad uh, uh, work to do this morning and um, I wonder, uh, I've lost them I saw them a minute ago, where are Trevor and Janet hey, come up here um, uh, you know we're, we're trying to get through things quickly, come on um, uh, we're very very sad because Trevor and Janet are moving away to be closer to family which means they're going to be far far away from us uh, so we're really really sad to see them go I know they've fulfilled different roles in the life of the church and been part of home groups particularly in uh, recent years and it's going to be a real real shame to see them leave but of course we're delighted uh, at the new opportunities that God will give you and I know Janet you wanted to say something uh, Trevor wasn't allowed but you wanted to say something uh, so um, uh, off you go and then I'll, I'll, we'll pray for you after that Thank you all for your love and friendship. Uh, particularly, it was lovely during lockdown with the PL9 Zoom group organized by Dave and Jay. Uh, it was lovely being at Messy Church yesterday and seeing the children and the good work there. And wish all of you all the best with the mission that's ahead. And pray for us. Thank you. 
just before you go, I'm not going to make you say lots more, <laughs> but just remind us exactly where you're going. We're going to a little village called Borton Monchelsey, which is near Maidstone in Kent. Sounds very posh. And it's only about 30 miles away from our family, and we have all our family, including seven grandchildren, all live in South East London. So they moved away to university and never came back to Plymouth. So they're not going to come back here, so we have to go nearer to them before we get too old. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm saying nothing about that. Um, uh, let's, um, if you're in the PL9 house group, uh, maybe you just want to come and join us up here. There's plenty of space. Um, and, uh, or if you're, you know, particularly would like to join us in praying for Trevor and Janet, why don't you come up as well? There's loads of room. Nigel, could you bob the handheld down here? I forgot to get it. Sorry. So I'll, I'll get out of the way. And uh, so Nigel's bringing the... Um, how dare you walk across the holy area? But, uh, I'm, only, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Uh, of course, I'm joking. Um, right. So uh, there's, there's a whole stage, and you've all bunched in one end. So uh, um, spread out, spread out. And it'd be lovely um, if perhaps two of you, a couple of you, would pray aloud. Uh, for we're all going to pray for them. Uh, but a couple of you would pray aloud, specifically for um, Trevor and Janet. So if you want to pray aloud, grab the microphone off me. Thank you, Jane. Lord Jesus, we thank you for these very special people. We thank you for their love for you and for their huge love for their family too, which has made them uproot themselves from this place and go somewhere new. We know, Lord, that your spirit goes before them, mm. prepares their home for them, fills it with your peace, and also leads them to another church family where they can be a part yeah. of this one just um, Christian organization that we all belong to, Lord. Bless them, we pray, in this coming week in all the busyness. May they know underneath it all that you love them and your love goes with them. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you always have the smallest detail in hand. And so we ask, Lord, that you just bless Janet and Trevor on the actual day that they move. And then from there on, we look forward to hearing the good news that you're working in their lives and through them, blessing them and extending your kingdom. Thank you for them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for Trevor and Janet and for the encouragement that they have been and the blessing they have been to us and so many. And we pray that you would continue that good work in them, that in the next uh, community that they find themselves in, the next church family they find themselves in, would you enable them both to be blessed and encouraged as they settle but also would you enable them to use uh, their gifts and the graces that are in their lives to encourage and build up others. We thank you for uh, the privilege of serving alongside them here and we ask that you would give them great blessings and mercies as they move and settle in Poshville. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. We'd like to give them a, a, a good send off, folks. Bless you. We're going to uh, sing again. Why don't, um, uh, children, why don't you stay for a bit of the song and then um, uh, head out towards the end of it and, uh, and then parents, etc., can come back as and when uh, you need to. We're going to sing Holy Spirit, Living Breath of God. So uh, our children, if you want to go to your session towards the end of the song. And uh, as always, uh, there's a fair few new uh, faces here today, so children's workers, um, family workers, could you please loiter in the foyer so that people know exactly where to go and uh, where children need to be collected from, etc., so we can make people feel as safe and as at home as possible. Let's stand together, Holy Spirit, living breath of God.
That was beautifully led, wasn't it? Thank you so much. That was uh, beautiful. Come to the reading of God's word uh, this morning. You'll, some of you will be aware that we began a series last week um, looking at uh, creation and our uh, responsibilities uh, towards it as God's people. And we're continuing that uh, theme this morning by looking at uh, this passage from Leviticus. And I think the words shall appear behind me. The Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land that I give you, the land shall keep a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years you shall sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its fruits. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall not sow your field or prune your vineyard. You shall not reap what grows of itself in your harvest or gather the grapes of your undressed vine. It shall be a year of solemn rest for the land." The Sabbath of the land shall provide food for you, for yourselves and for your male and female slaves, and for your hired worker and the sojourner who lives with you, and for your cattle and for the wild animals that are in your land. All its yield shall be for food. You shall count seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the time of the seven weeks of years shall give you 49 years. Then you shall sound the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement you shall sound the trumpet throughout all your land. And you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you when each of you shall return to his property and each of you shall return to his clan. That fiftieth year shall be a jubilee for you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of itself, nor gather grapes from the undressed vines, for it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You may eat the produce of the field. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his property. And if you make a sale to your neighbour or buy from your neighbour, you shall not wrong one another. You shall pay your neighbour according to the number of years after the jubilee, And he shall sell to you according to the number of years for crops. If the years are many, you shall increase the price. And if the years are few, you shall reduce the price. For it is the number of the crops that he is selling to you. You shall not wrong one another, but you shall fear your God. For I am the Lord your God. Therefore you shall do my statutes and keep my rules and perform them. And then you will dwell in the land securely. The land will yield its fruit and you will eat your fill and dwell in it securely. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year? If we may not sow or gather in our crop, I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year so that it will produce a crop sufficient for three years. When you sow in the eighth year, you will be eating some of the old crop. You shall eat the old until the ninth year when its crop arrives. The land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. 
for you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the country you possess, you shall allow a redemption of the land. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your written word. And we pray now that the power of the Holy Spirit would descend upon it and upon us. That we might hear and see and encounter your living word, even our Saviour Christ. For his name's sake we pray. Amen. So, as I said uh, a minute ago, we're in a, a, a season where we're exploring our relationship as uh, the Lord's people uh, to uh, the land that we live in um, and the globe which uh, we have. And um, just to set this message in some context, the first thing I want to uh, say is um, uh, uh, to remind us that the earth is uh, ours on loan. The earth is ours on loan. Verse 23, the land shall not be sold in perpetuity for the land is mine, says the Lord. Now, a couple of uh, years ago, um, it was Christmas time and um, uh, we were about to go back to our uh, parents and in-laws uh, back in Bath and um, my wife was coming into uh, town to uh, pick me up. And it was you know, that little sort of hinterland between Christmas and New Year. And, um, and unfortunately, she had uh, an altercation with one of the barriers uh, that were outside uh, on the road coming in. Uh, it's easily, easily done. I mean, they're hard to see, aren't they, the big silver uh, barriers? But anyway, that's, that's irrelevant. Um, if I'm not here next Sunday night when I'm next appointed to preach, you know why. Um, uh, anyway... The car was, uh, we're not able to drive it, and being between Christmas and New Year, lots of bank holidays around, uh, we were stuck. And we thought, you know, we were tired and exhausted, looking forward to going to celebrate with family. This is before the pandemic was ever on anyone's horizon. And we thought, well, we're just going to be here. Um, all our plans have, have gone, whatever. And we came to church here on the Sunday, this happened on a Saturday night, came to church here on the Sunday and uh, word had got out um, uh, what happened. And uh, where are they? Paul and Penny. Paul and Penny kindly lent us, um, it was very certainly Penny's car, uh, <laughs> Paul and Penny lent us Penny's uh, car, very nice, Ford Galaxy it was, I think, and um, oh, C-Max, and... Uh, and we used it. They let us use it for um, uh, the time we were away. Actually, furthermore than that, we went over to get it, and I think I left my wallet at your house or something, and you came all the way back from uh, deepest Cornwall to return uh, my wallet so we could actually uh, go. So it was really, really kind and generous of them, and uh, we appreciated that hugely. But of course, because um, it was uh, Penny's car that I was driving... Uh, however competent a driver I like to think that I am, there was this sense of nervousness. You know, whenever you drive someone else's car, um, you, you think, oh, um, I really hope I don't crash this one. You know, I really hope that, uh, you know, this doesn't happen. I really hope that, you know, uh, something inadvertently that I can control doesn't happen to it because it was their property. They would kindly lent it to us. We were very grateful for that, but it belonged fundamentally to Paul and Penny. I think Johnny said to you last week, wonderful Psalm 24, the earth is whose? The Lord's and everything in it. This verse echoes that too, verse 23. So the context of the passage is of uh, the institution of the years of Sabbath and Jubilee. And the year of Jubilee uh, is a time of reset for the produce and uh, the agriculture sector in Israel. But it's also uh, a reset for the year of Jubilee. Every 50th year, uh, property would revert back to the original tribes of Israel. And the point there is to emphasize to the people of God who are to uh, who are about to inhabit this new land, that the land that they are going to is God's land. It is never theirs. 
It is God's land. And he does care about how that land is used. So I don't need to repeat all of last week's uh, sermon, but um, it is our responsibility as Christians to steward well the resources that we are given. If it belongs to God, it is therefore ours on loan, and therefore we treat the resources of the earth which are finite with the respect that they are due. It is ours on loan. It belongs to somebody else. Secondly, um, there is this uh, concept of uh, Sabbath that is introduced in these uh, verses here. And already uh, the, the period of weekly rest, you work for six days and have uh, one to recuperate, has already been established. But here the Lord extends that principle uh, into years as well. So remember, this is an agricultural society. They live off the land. That's how they, their economy works. That's how they make money. And every seven years, they were to stop all of that activity, just to cease completely. The land was not to be farmed, and they were to trust for a year the Lord to provide. So that sabbatical year, from where we get uh, the, the fact that in the Methodist Church every seven years, ministers have a sabbatical. Mine is uh, taking place a year from now, God willing. That sense of uh, those of you that speak Methodist, the six-year rule, you know, you do six years in a row, and then you must have a year free uh, to yourself recover, but let somebody else have a go. It all comes from this principle now, the sabbatical year here is about the land. Notice uh, earlier on in, in the text, it's a, uh, uh, it, you shall keep a Sabbath to the, uh, to the Lord. Where is I've lost my place now completely. But anyway, uh, in the early verses, around 3, 4, and 5, it's very clear that it is the land that's having a Sabbath. Less so the people, but it's the land that is the focus of this year to recover. Because the land needs space to recover from its plundering. Its resources are being used. They're being used for good, uh, good things, to feed people and provide for people. But again, uh, it is there for the people's use. It's there for our use. But it is never there to be exploited. And so in this uh, principle that the land needs to have be ceased from farming for one year, it needs to rest and recreate and recover, that sense of constant human need is challenged. The earth and the Lord will provide without constant plundering, even by ceasing to farm it for one year. The Lord says in the sixth year there'll be enough, more than enough, to counter what you would have expected to farm in the seventh. What does that say to us now, living not in an agricult largely agricultural-based society? Well, it tells us that uh, the resources of our planet need to be treated with respect. We see, don't we, uh, how the finite and limited resources of our planet are being exploited in the uh, uh, use of uh, fossil fuels, in the uh, rapid decrease of forestation, in the uh, drilling for shale gas, all over the place, we are trying to make the most of limited resources. And because the Lord prescribes Sabbath for the land, it just emphasizes again that God cares about the resources of the planet. And if God cares about it, then you and I should care about it too. And so, 
I'm not suggesting that we go and lie down in front of motorway junctions or, uh, you know, this isn't a kind of a, a, a blanket um, um, uh, backing endorsement of, uh, you know, kind of climate e e extremists. Um, if you want to do that, then, well, that's up to you. That, but that isn't the point of this message. But the point of this message is to say it is also to care about the climate and the resources of the earth and to be conscious of that is not some left-wing liberal kind of issue that is divorced from the mainstream of the Christian faith. It is not. It is not. In treating the earth well, in being conscious of the use of its resources, we step in line with the will and purpose of God, who throughout the scripture makes clear that he cares about such things too. And then uh, lastly, um, everybody benefits when the land is treated well. So in these um, sabbatical provisions, who is it that benefits the most? Well, it's the poor. So often in, in the normal uh, six years, uh, the land would be farmed and, and they're allowed to kind of get the scraps at the edges. If they're poor or they're uh, an alien in the land, you know, a, 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 an immigrant in the land, they're allowed just to get the, the scraps that are left. In the sabbatical year, everything just grows wild. And any of you that are keen gardeners, I know there's a few of you in the room, um, will know that actually for a lot of the kind of plants that you plant, or a lot of the kind of fruit plants, yeah, it, they, they work best if you prune them and cut them and tend them, but actually almost without doing anything, they'll keep growing back year and year and year and year. We have raspberry plants that are uh, planted there by David King, peace be upon him, you know, in the, back in the day when he established the great Garden of Eden at 48 Ven Grove. Now, I'm a hopeless gardener. Uh, you know, I kind of, I pray over these raspberries, that's about it, really. Um, but I don't prune them, cut them, you know, whatever you're meant to do with them. We even got, when we moved out, and uh, when we moved in and Dave and Jane moved out, they even sent us an instructive video, their own gardener's world, how to care for this great garden, all right? And um, anyway, but we, we do very little. And these beautiful raspberries, red currants, whatever they're called, it's all the same thing, aren't they? But, um, <laughs> but they come back every year. No, I'm, I've, I'm certainly well aware that with a bit more effort and intentionality, they might bear even more fruit and be even better. I, I recognise that. The point is, that without much work, so much of the agricultural produce of the land just keeps regrowing. Some, obviously, it doesn't work like that, but some, it does. So in the sa Sabbath year, when there isn't intensive farming... The people are free to live off the land and they can gather anything uh, that grows. They can get what they need and that lack of systemic harvesting means that potentially the poor every seventh year can gather more than just the scraps around the edges. And so everybody benefits from this sabbatical rhythm. And then every 50 years, the year of Jubilee, the great equaliser, where everything is set back to how it in originally was. And it reflects again that even those that have used their God-given skill to acquire and to uh, build a great portfolio, it's not condemned here, it's never condemned here. But that there's a sense of, of that equalization again. That isn't to condemn wealth, but it's to provide for the poor to provide for the poor because throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation we see God's deliberate heart for the poor and the broken and the dispossessed and the reality is that the exhausting of the planet's resources the increasing rising in temperature the diminishing of the polar ice cap the people that will suffer the most from this are the poor and the vulnerable and the dispossessed. Most of the people in this room will have government provision or we've got our own wealth to kind of buy our way out of things if we need to. But the nations 
uh, who are currently at the most risk of flooding are those that are poor and needy. And so to care for the planet and to be conscious of the issues of climate justice is actually to love our neighbour. So it can never not be a Christian issue. Does that make sense? It matters. It matters. So it's about caring for one another as well as it is about honouring the Lord and what he's given. So caring for the climate and the environment is an expression of a heart for justice and for the poor. So God cares about these things, folks. And we need to as well. And as a church family, I mean, individually, um, we can kind of encourage things, but I quite rightly haven't got control over your individual uh, lives and wouldn't want to. But as a church organisation, we do have some influence. And actually, we're, um, we're not great at doing this. And I, I'm starting with me. Let me illustrate this. I do not have a recycling basket in my office. Yeah, thank you, whoever tutted. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> Back in the great and glorious day of Dave Martin's reign, of course, there were recycling baskets everywhere. But, um, <clears throat> but no, seriously, that's an illustration. So I'm telling you that not to kind of rejoice in rebellion, but I'm telling you that to say that actually this starts with me. All right? So, or, so, or, yeah, yeah, it does start with me. It starts with you. It starts with us together. So part of faith in action, one of our two foci this year, part of it, not all of it, um, he's got to ask the question, how do we make the world a more just place? How do we as a church family, in the way we organise ourselves, the way we uh, use resources, reflect that heart for the justice uh, for the world in its substance and in its population? How do we do that? And I say again, this is right at the centre of the heart of the Lord. It's not a political talk, this. If the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, we should care about how it's used. This is a climate justice is a thoroughly Christian issue. That's the point of today's talk. We're here next week about how we could practically share out those resources better as we reflect on God's provision in the harvest. But the earth belongs to God. How we use the earth is a reflection of treating his things well and treating his people well. Let's continue then to seek ways, maybe even in our conversation at the general church meeting, although I it's not exclusively aimed at that. How do we reflect this more as a church together? Let's pray. And Father, we uh, acknowledge our misuse of the world's resources. We acknowledge our greed and our apathy. We acknowledge our compliance in injustice and our lack of care for our neighbour. Lord, we began this morning quite rightly rejoicing in your greatness, in all that you have given. But would the Spirit of God who convicts us around sin and righteousness and judgment cause us afresh to reflect on our lives and how we use these resources well for your honour and the betterment of the vulnerable. Forgive us, we pray, for our carelessness, Lord. Have mercy on us. And we ask, Father, that you would inspire us, give us creative ways where we can make a difference. We pray for communities all across the world that even already are vulnerable to the warming of the earth. 
people who live on floodplains, people whose uh, fields are uh, at risk of being uh, submerged, people whose harvests uh, are not as regular or as uh, usual as they used to be because of crazy weather patterns. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Move us into action as your people. That the kingdom of justice and righteousness might come in greater measure in our lives and across the planet. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing uh, uh, together Beauty for Brokenness. And uh, after we have sung this, we'll uh, give instructions about sharing communion and we'll move to breaking bread together. Would you stand if you're able to do so as the musicians lead us?
Please do take your seats. Some words of explanation about how we are sharing uh, communion at the minute. Uh, just mindful of people wanting to do different things at uh, different paces. But uh, uh, what we will do in the mornings from, the, from now on is that uh, there will be two stations uh, either side of the um, communion area at the, the front here. And we invite you just to come forward through the two uh, aisles. If you're upstairs and would like to share in communion, if you wouldn't mind making your way uh, downstairs and joining a, a queue as appropriate. And uh, we will uh, have trays of, of bread and of wine. As uh, One tray has cut up bread in glasses and the other has uh, uh, wine in. If you would take your own, please. Um, and eat it as you receive it and drink as you receive it and make your way back to your uh, seats. Okay, so basically queue up, take glass of bread, glass of wine and then go back. That is the, uh, the way we're doing it. So uh, the bread is gluten-free, the wine is non-alcoholic and uh, I should say it's the policy and practice of this church and every Methodist church that anybody that loves the Lord Jesus or is seeking to love him a little bit or a lot is welcome uh, here. This is the Lord's table and not the church's, and all are welcome. You don't need to be a member of our church or confirmed into our tradition. If mobility is uh, a problem for you, we don't want anyone to feel excluded, please just say to a, a near neighbour who's coming up uh, that you would prefer communion to be brought to you in your seat, and when we've served others, we'll gladly bring communion to you. Okay, we're very, very happy to do that. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness and favour uh, on your people and on the land throughout generations. And though we've turned our backs upon you and misused your gifts so very often, you graciously keep backing us back and graciously keep providing for our needs. We thank you that we see that ultimate provision in the person of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his life of justice and compassion and mercy. Thank you for his words of wisdom and his works of power. Thank you that in an act of supreme selfless love, he gave up his life as a ransom for many. We rejoice that he is no longer dead, but is raised by the power of the Spirit to life, and even now is ascended and sits at your right hand, where he ever lives, to pray for us. We thank you that we're not abandoned to ourselves or left alone, but that your Holy Spirit has been poured out in his name and is with us now in this moment. Pour out that same spirit, Lord, we pray, that these simple things of bread and of wine might be for us the body and blood of Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For we recall how on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks broke the bread and gave it to his friends, saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this whenever you eat it in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine. Once more, he gave thanks and gave it to each of his friends, saying, drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink this, you drink the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. The Bible tells us that whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again.
This is my body broken for you bringing you wholeness making you free take it and eat it and when you do do
We pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Amen. Before we sing our last uh, song to close our service, reminder that uh, tea and coffee serve for everybody uh, at the hatch. If you go either into the new hall um, where there's uh, sofas, etc., or uh, go to the hatch out of the double doors and go left, you'll find uh, tea, coffee, refreshments served. And uh, feel free to bring your cup back in if you need to for the meeting, which will start at 12.30, okay? Um, And uh, we're going to sing uh, God of Justice, Saviour to all. Let's stand together. God of justice, saviour to all, came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and not be served. Jesus, you have called us, freely we've received. blessing of God, or his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and around you and amongst you this day and every day. Amen.